zapomnijcie, z kim żeście się spotkali! Z Janosikiem! Jura Janosik is one of the most popularized and known folk legends in Poland, Slovakia and Czech Republic. Often dubbed as a real-life Robin Hood, there are many mysteries and legends surrounding this highwayman. The year is 1688 and Jura Janosik has been born to a family of serfs in a relatively obscure small village of Cerchova in the northern part of then Habsburg monarchy Kingdom of Hungary and nowadays Slovakia. Cerchova was a small village consisting of serfs who had to work on the farmlands of the landlord, who usually was from a bigger city. The villagers and serfs over the years of the hard labor developed a strong sense of pride and unity. Young Jura Janosik embodied the best of it and at just 18 years old he joined the Kruts insurgents who were fighting for the independence from the Habsburg monarchy. His disciplined approach and hard work quickly earned him the respect among the insurgents and he was granted the rank of captain. However, this insurgency was crushed at the Battle of Trenčín, mostly due to the betrayal of Lord Ladislav Očkaj, due to which Young Jura Janosik developed a deep sense of loyalty, what it really meant to be betrayed, and how much destruction and loss of lives it can bring. Janosik managed to retreat from the battle, but he was soon captured by the Habsburg mercenaries and forced to join the local force, where he served as a young prison guard in a castle in the city of Bitcha. Refusing would mean a severe punishment, possibly even death. During his work as a prison guard, he met an imprisoned man who would change his life forever. The man was a fellow insurgent soldier, Tomasz Uhorczyk. They spent days talking to each other. Two men, with the same ideology, who once served at the same side during a battle, now ended up in a two different worlds. This hypocrisy of destiny led them to believe that you should not let your life to be controlled by anyone else, but you and you alone. However, Tomasz Uhorczyk took it a step further. He offered a different perspective to Ira Janosik. He said that the man of his bravery, loyalty and charisma should never work the fields and smuggle horses from Poland ever again in his life and that he is meant to do greater things. These thoughts led them astray to the decision that they should form a bandit group and grab a control over their own destiny. Janosik completely embraced the idea and helped Tomasz Uherczyk to escape the imprisonment. They got in touch with some of their former mates from the insurgency as well as the other friends they knew closely and formed a highway main group, which was supposed to rob the rich merchants on a well-known route. After a few successful robberies in Moravia, nowadays Czech Republic, Uherczyk decided to step away from the banditry and led Janosik to be captain of the band. In order for Janosik to be accepted as the new captain of the band, he had to pass the test which consisted of three disciplines. Duel with a saber, shooting the gun and fighting. After passing all the tests, Janosik became the new de facto leader of the band. This is where all the legends started forming. Juraj Janosik had a deep sense of loyalty. He chose to stick around only with a few fellow bandits, whom he really trusted and who shared similar views of the world. He usually wore a traditional outfit with a walking stick axe called Valashka and a pistol. When robbing rich merchants, they often yelled, give your soul to God and your money to us. However, as a man born into a poor family of serfs, he understood the value of money and never really embraced the true spirit of banditry. Perhaps he did it for the sport, or perhaps he was indeed a true real-life Robin Hood. His rules were that no one must have been killed or even hurt during the robberies. Quickly, after making a ton of money from the successful robberies, he started giving most of it away to the poor local families, kids, serfs, even lending some of the money to his fellow mates. This has earned him a reputation of the honorable bandit who robs the rich and gives to the poor. Janosik's band consisted of approximately 20 bandits who were all from various places around Moravia, Poland or Slovakia and a bunch of random people who were helping the group by selling them guns, bringing them food or even letting them have fun at the local pub. Janosik and his band have robbed a lot of notorious merchants and landlords. Their loot consisted of so many ridiculous things such as wigs of rich counts, golden pistols, silver swords, silver cutlery, expensive clothes, fur coats and a lot of rings which they have given away to local girls. Sometimes, when they were being chased after a successful robbery, they simply lost the majority of their spoils by throwing them away. 
The plunder which Janosik decided to keep was usually hidden in various different places scattered throughout the mountains, villages and passages, which, unfortunately, was later used to incriminate Yuri Janosik of his crimes. Janosik's fame quickly became a widespread sensation. Even some of the wives of the rich lords wanted to meet this honorable thief. You can only imagine the fantasy of these rich ladies when they heard about this handsome young man who robs his victims, does not hurt them, and then gives all his money away to the poor. However, this sensation also came with the reluctance of local people to help him and his group, because they were afraid of the severe punishment they could have incurred from the monarchy, especially during the turbulent times when insurgencies were frequent. Therefore, Janosik and his group were adored by many, and at the same time also thrown upon by others. At the peak of their banditry and fame, their robberies were organized all across southern Poland, eastern part of Czech Republic and northern Slovakia. One thing in life has been true throughout the history. Steal from the rich, seduce their wives, and they will put a big price on your head. And therefore, his bandit life was short-lived. In 1712, just two years into the banditry, Jura Janosik was captured and detained at the mansion of Hrachovo but he managed to pay off the guards and he escaped. However, just a year later, he was again captured and this time he was sentenced to death in the most terrible way possible. A hook was supposed to be pierced through his ribs on the left side and he was to be left dangling on the gallows to die. Despite the fact that he never killed anyone during his robberies, his only way of escaping this gruesome death penalty was if he just gave up the names of his fellow bandits and mates. During the trial, Janosik spoke a lot about this time in the army of the insurgents and freedom fighters, but not once he mentioned any of his mates. His sense of loyalty was stronger than the fear of death. A true and honorable highwayman. Before jumping on the hook, he said the last famous words, If you have baked me, you should also eat me, and then proceeded to die as an ordinary man who was born into serfdom became a soldier, turned highwayman, died a legend. Life in 17th and 18th century for an average serf or villager was a tough one, full of misery, hard labor, fighting and dying for the very landlords they despised. People wanted revenge, and that's why the legends of local bandits, highwaymen and robbers were widespread and fantasized about. The story of Jura Janosik became one of the most known real-life legends amongst everyone in the entire northern part of the Kingdom of Hungary. Jura Janosik has been sole part of more than 65 historical books ranging from as early as 1785 all the way to 2019. There have been several movies done about this folk hero dating back even to 1921. Nowadays, there are multiple festivities and traditional holidays in the name of Jura Janosik in order to honor this real-life folk legend. Every year, there are Janosik days in the village where he was born, Kerchova. Local people gather around in the traditional clothing, listen to traditional folk music and enjoy a good atmosphere for a small festival. The more active people honor Jura Janosik by doing an ultramarathon race across the High Tatra mountain range. A race that is attended by hundreds of people every year, with an amazing and beautiful scenery, also called Ultra Janosik. Close to the village Terchova, there are many beautiful hikes and sightseeings, one of which is the huge statue of Jura Janosik, or a hike towards the Janosik's holes, a beautiful hike across a gorge where you are climbing the ladders next to small waterfalls and finish the hike on one of two nearby mountains. Jura Janosik and his incredible story has been inscribed into the hearts and minds of people in three different countries across more than three centuries and his legend still lives on to this day. Thank <laughs> you.